the box got off the 2019 test season uh, probably in the, the best way possible, Ryan. And I think we're going to just quickly first of, first of all unpack that win over the Wallabies, a bonus point. And I think it ticked every box that Rusty Erasmus could possibly have hoped and that it was a team that went into that game uh, generally termed as a B team. And not only did they get a win, but they got one convincingly. And then we saw the emergence uh, of a player that I think we're going to be speaking about a lot in the years to come. Herschel Yanchi's absolutely outstanding debut at Scrum Off. I mean, he was, you know, he was seriously amazing in, in the, the way he just went about his basics and then scored two tries. He showed all the signs of someone just simply born for Test Rugby. And beyond that, uh, for me, just the, the guys coming back, uh, Marcel Kutsia, uh, I think he had a nice little cameo off the bench, which I think just showed what he's capable of and particularly France Stein, I thought looked really hungry and up for Springbok rugby, which is perhaps a question that has hovered over him and he looked like he's someone he really wants to get back in that frame for the World Cup. Yeah, very encouraging, um, particularly since this is like the alternate team. Um, what, we've, what we've struggled with in the past, and you and I have spoken about this um, a couple of times on and off camera, is the depth um, as being a concern. Um, for uh, for the Springboks and even, I mean, we'll get to the New Zealand um, test in a minute. Uh, but even just looking at the bench in that particular test, when you got when you got somebody like Francois Lowe and Franz Stein um, and Herschel Yankees coming off the bench, um, amongst others, I mean, Beast is on the bench as well. That's a really really great situation. Um, and um, and speaking about speaking about about Yankees, yeah, look, we've got a tempo kind of praise and, um, and, um, and you know, let's see how he goes against New Zealand, um, but without taking anything away from him, he's been exceptional um, in his rookie year in Super Rugby. Yeah. Um, and then for a player to come into Test Rugby and look like it's, like it's his natural home, it speaks to his talent, but more than that, it speaks to his temperament, right? Because that's the difference between players that excel at Test level and the players that fade away. And there's some really talented players that have faded away on the test stage because they don't have the temperament for that yep. um, like level of rugby and he just looked like he's got like the whole package um, and yeah they were they were encouraging like my guy like Marcel Kutsia we spoke about him last week mm. like what a fantastic play to have as an option sure. um, yeah. and uh, again I'd love to see him go to Japan um, but there is no shortage of options in, across the back row um, and, um, and then someone you didn't mention, somebody I've spoken about at length in the past and I'd love to know what your thoughts were, uh, was Alton Yankees. For me, you know, there's, like I'm starting, like, I've, like, like I thought he was done at this level. I didn't think he had it, temperament thing again. Um, but that performance on Saturday was exceptional. Uh, goal kicking specifically, but just his general gameplay and the way he controlled the tempo of the game. So increasingly I'm starting to think he's like a coach guy. Right? So what I mean by that is he's gotta he's gotta have that he's gotta click with the coach. The coach has gotta understand him, gotta know how to get the best out of him. Um, and then he plays for you. Um, and he excels for you. So maybe Russ is that guy for him, or, or maybe one of the other coaches on that staff. Um, something about them just resonates with him. Um, yeah. He's feeling comfortable in that environment. I don't know, but he just he looked great on Saturday. I don't yeah. Know sure. Well, I mean, uh, Swayze De Bruyne is still involved with the box, and obviously uh, the Lions didn't have the greatest Super Rugby season, nor did Elton really. But um, what would really impress me about him was just the goal kicking, and I haven't, um, I haven't seen Elton look so composed from the kicking tee, and I think that's important because it. I think it's, easy kicks the majority. Yeah, yeah. and I think that um, that for me is an indication of your confidence in general play too, if you, st you step up in those pressure moments mm. with uh, kicks and, and goal kicking has never been one of his greatest greatest uh, strong points and yet he looked really, uh, you're really composed and his goal kicking was outstanding. For me that really impressed but I think it also just touches on a point of just the way, for me it's not only him but a number of uh, Super Rugby players who maybe looked like they were playing within themselves during Super Rugby suddenly stepped up and looked like they had that extra edge and of course first test of a year, I mean of the year but there was something else um, about them, they just looked to be extremely hungry and for me it shows that there's competition uh, and real intent building in that squad because Etzebeth uh, looked again like, like he was really hungry, he had that, that old physicality back, Beast, um, Beast at the scrums, 
after winning one scrum penalty was kind of knocking people out the way yeah. and walking with a swagger again. And, you know, it wasn't just him, but there were a few who just had a little bit of that mojo back and whether they were trying to prove a point before this up upcoming, upcoming game against the All Blacks or not. But there are a few of them who just look like they've, they've got a bit of confidence building and that's a good thing. Yeah, and our, I mean, our colleague John Cornelia has been writing about this. Um, you know, he's, he's been at the Springbok camps and covering them um, and, um, and he's written about like this energy and this kind of the sense of this culture that has built, been built at the Springboks. Of course it started last year and um, credit to like Rasseni staff. Um, all we can ask for is, is that the environment is good um, and it's, a, it's kind of fertile soil to, um, to grow the type of performances that we, I think we saw this week. Um, and then, um, and that there is a plan, right? So, uh, so there's a lot of criticism of this, of these like alternating like teams. But there's a clear plan, and I can get behind anything if there's a clear plan. For me, the frustration would come is like in previous years. I mean, I don't want to hawk back and kind of target coaches, but there was just like this hybrid like. Um, tactical philosophy, you didn't really know what they were trying to do. At some stages they were trying to um, uh, play expansively and, and then play tight, like kind of like, it was just like this Frankenstein type <laughs> scenario. It all mixed up, yeah. I mean, now there's a clear plan, there's, there's a, there's a, clearly there's a good culture in the team and one that promotes um, players thriving. So yeah, I'm happy and I saw the exact same thing you saw. Yep. I think we maybe just will maybe finish off here with a bit of a, a longer look at the All Blacks game. Obviously, a, a big rematch uh, from you know the, the the last year's results in Wellington, that that famous win there. And having had actually had a look uh, rewinding to 12 months ago, and the team that played there to the team now um, is very similar. There are a few guys who ha are injured, um, but it's really just a handful of changes, and that's about it. So it looks like you know from that moment onwards, there's been a uh, kind of a, a plan that's that's I think Russi's had in mind and he's he knows clearly who his first choice team is because it hasn't changed all that much in a, in a year mm -hmm. and the guys that he's backed are, are pro have, you know have proven themselves over over this time but uh, obviously the one bolter is Quaker Smith at open side flank and I'm interested to hear what you think about him because you probably he's probably not someone we would have thought would be in that first choice team for this All Blacks game and yet I think Russi just wants to to give an opportunity to someone who has a huge work engine mm. um, and is just you know going to offer that impact for 80 minutes. I don't see him really holding down a starting position uh, going towards the World Cup because I think Sia Khaleesi will come back and it's good to see on that note that he's going to probably play Curry Cup this weekend. Mm. I eventually think he will uh, get that berth back and lead the box to the World Cup but Kwaka for me is a very good option on, on the bench if he shows that he's capable and it's a great opportunity for him to go listen I can play 15 man rugby on the biggest stage and with the greatest pressure and uh, you know really step up. Yeah so so everything I've heard about Kwaka and also like chatting to um, chatting to Rassi like just generally about like Kwaka like there's like this consistent theme is like the selflessness um, that he that he displays as a as a teammate um, the work ethic that you've um, that you've mentioned already and then the key one again harking back to what we um, what we spoke about earlier on the fact that he doesn't get flustered under pressure um, that that I think is at the heart of his consistency um, in super rugby he's one of the most consistent um, definitely like for, uh, forward players in for from my perspective um, and I think the fact that he's just like this even keel like type personality that doesn't get flustered by um, big pressure situations um, that combined with that work ethic um, combined with that selfless kind of attitude makes for a player that's kind of um, I, I mean I wouldn't say irre irrepressible but but definitely um, is at the forefront of your mind and that's why Rassi would have picked him. I mean, to go with all of his clear technical skills and those types of things. Look, there's no question that they lose an option in the lineout, but you, you supplement that by picking the back row, um, like, like a... Peter Steph to Troy back Peter row, Steph yeah. and Dwayne, and then the lock options, mm. clearly there. Um, they've got enough on the ground because Dwayne can do that job, Malcolm Marx can do that job as well. I mean, Quack is no slouch there. Um, but they've they've got uh, Damon Dielender is good on the ground, so they've got they've got enough there, and they've got cover in like in flow. Um, so I'm I'm really happy for him, and I'd love nothing more than to see him excel in Wellington, man.
He's like the type of player that you root for. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I just, I'd love nothing more than to see him excel there. Whether he's going to go to Japan is another thing. I think he can force his way onto that, into that squad by the weight of performance, if given more opportunities in this competition. Yeah. But man, I'd love to see him do well. Yeah, I think like we, we said, it's just, um, he may not get a ticket to Japan based purely on the amount of competition there is in the squad. And I think uh, we, we may not go into it right now, but just it does seem that there are um, there's real depth building in almost every position where yeah. there are at least two options that um, really wouldn't you know if you lose one you're not going to um, actually lose too much yeah. in the replacement if you if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. But Ryan, let me just ask you one quickly um, without getting maybe caught up too much in the hype of uh, of the first win. Do you think the the box are capable of pulling off another victory? What would be your prediction in terms of a, of a result? Yeah, look, I watched that. Um, I watched Ulbricht play uh, Argentina last week, and you kind of you kind of got to see like how the tournament unfolds to determine whether Argentina were just really good, or if the All Blacks with the relatively inexperienced test side were like had an off day. Right, so you got to see how it plays out. Um, but even with even with the side that they selected. Um, I like. I still think. I still think that we that we've got a chance. Um, it will take like a massive effort from the Springboks, and I don't think they're like quite there yet. But we certainly moved. I think past that period where we took fifty from them. Um, you know, in uh, away from home. Um, was it Albany? If I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah. And um, and I think the the. What was a gulf between the two sides, even 18 months ago, um, has narrowed um, significantly. I still, th I still think the All Blacks are too good um, at home um, in Wellington um, for this particular box side. But, uh, but they're building something, man, and that's encouraging. They're building something. They go into this test and I, and I don't look at the side and go, man, we're going to get wiped. Or our, our front 15 are really good, but... We've got nothing coming on off the bench. Mm. That's not the case at all. I think this is a really potent 23. And I'm excited for the game. I think I think the All Blacks will edge us. I think they'll do us by 10. Um, but uh, but it's going to be a close test. Yeah, great. Well, thank you, Ryan. I think uh, I'd agree in, in, a, in a close All, Black, All Blacks victory. I think they'll get it by about five. But let's hope for a competitive game. I think we're going to get that.